Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. So both my personality and the age of my kids have really necessitated the fact that I have always needed a schedule or routine in order to make it through our homeschool day, our homeschool week. I have just never been a person who can kind of fly by the seat of my pants. And so I have this year's schedule to share with you. And you guys, it is genius. I, it just is, it just is genius. I have to share with you how it is working. I mean, I really have found a good groove in understanding how long things take, how to fit things in, but really where this schedule shines is this hack, this one hack for what I am doing with my preschoolers how I am managing my four and a half year old twins while still being able to get our schedule done. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you step by step through our day as well as our week. So if you are interested, stay tuned. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel if you're new here or welcome back if you've been coming for a while. Like I said, today's video is all about our homeschool schedule. And if you are excited to hear about my hack for my preschoolers, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing if you want to. But let's hop in. So I'm going to walk you through this document. You can see here, it is my schedule. It is not fancy. I have written it in pen, erasable pen. Friction pens are amazing. I actually just made a video about some of my favorite homeschool supplies. I'll link it above. But I use my friction pens to write out my schedule and that way I can change things around. But it is pretty much set as of right now. So I'm gonna walk you through this document. And typically I also have other things on here such as my workout schedule, our chore schedule, my YouTube schedule, but I took it off of here just for simplicity's sake. And I am actually thinking about filming a video about kind of my non-homeschool tasks, if you will. So look for that. It should be coming somewhat soon. I think what I'll do is I'll run the schedule kind of off to the side as I talk about it. So if you look at the whole schedule at once, you can see I have lined it out by time, but know that I am not really strict on the time. I have just done this enough with my kids to know about how long things take for them. And so I have the numbers along the side. And you can see up top here, I'll zoom in to the up top part, the up top is more kind of my schedule. I had to figure this out so that I had enough time at the beginning of the day to feel more grounded and not so frantic. You, so you can see I set my alarm for five o'clock and that's usually when I get up and I get my coffee and I read my Bible for a bit. And then by 5.30, I typically pray with my husband. We talk about the day and we pray about what's going on in our lives. And then I go and take a shower. And usually I'm done showering and getting ready by about 6.30. So the important part here is my kids typically wake up at seven. Correction, they are allowed out of their rooms by seven. They usually wake up around six and then we have to give them kind of stuff to do and keep them in their rooms. But they're allowed out by seven and then we have breakfast at 7.30. So in that 6.30 to 7.30 time frame, that's where I really like to get some stuff done. So I tend to prep breakfast. And what I mean is I get all their breakfast ready kind of their four plates of breakfast as well as my breakfast because over breakfast time is when I tend to do schoolwork. So I have to be really pretty organized. I can't just hand them their breakfasts and then go make mine because I will miss that opportunity to read. And you'll see in just a second. So I will prep the breakfast and I will clean the kitchen. And this is actually typically when I start my chores, which again, I didn't write on this document, but it's things like start the laundry or meal plan or something like that. I'll kind of start my chores, what I can do in that time frame, and then we get to breakfast. So like I said, I'll call all my kids, they all have to be ready, they all have to be dressed, they have to have their beds made, things like that before breakfast time. So the good thing about that is they all have to do that, so then I send them to each other to encourage them to hurry up sort of idea. And so then we do breakfast, and over breakfast is when we do Bible. So we use a sunlight, and I will actually link the playlist for our curriculum for this year above so you can see what we use because I'm not going to detail all the things we use but here during breakfast we do our sunlight bible so that starts with memory work and reading the bible teaching as well as reading a section of the bible so that typically happens over breakfast and then we transition to math you can see I have the whole of the eight o'clock hour blocked off for math and so this is one of my trickier time points because the twins don't necessarily have anything to do, but they are still kind of fresh from waking up. So they're not usually cranky or anything. So I can kind of get away with doing math with the big kids while the four-year-olds kind of free play. And it usually works out 
sometimes it doesn't. But that's what we do for math Monday through Thursday. So I'll chat a little bit about our Friday schedule because it's more unique near the end of the video when I talk more about our weekly schedule. But as for right now, we hop right into math. And I made that choice early on because it's the easiest way to do it. It fits pretty well in an hour to do both of my kids. What I like about that too is then that allows them to take their math sheets because they each have like a fact sheet to work through as well as their worksheet following our math lesson. So they have those two things plus their independent work. So you can see here in this nine o'clock hour, I have written chores, math worksheets, and independent work. So this is once they're done with their math, they're responsible for their chores, which again, I'll include in my chores video. So they have specific chores that go on each day. They have to do their chores as well as finish their math worksheets and do their independent work. So I'm gonna zoom here to the very bottom of the sheet because that's where I made a note as to what the independent work looks like, especially for my third grader because he has multiple things to do each day. So he always has handwriting and then on Mondays he has logic, on Tuesdays he has typing, Wednesdays he has wordly wise, his vocabulary program, and then Thursdays he has his reading comprehension program. As for my daughter, she just does handwriting and logic on Mondays and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, she just has handwriting. So those are the things that they have, they already have in their binders, which is another video that is coming out shortly, how I run their binders. So they have everything they should be able to do to do their math worksheets and their independent work. And why I love this is because it keeps them busy when I transition to my next block, which is preschool. So I'm doing a little at home preschool with my four and a half year olds. And I also am gonna send them to preschool. So you'll see that as we get a little further down into the day. But this is when I do a little bit of beginning phonics and read their stories and things like that is during that 9.30ish time frame. And it does not take long. I think we work for about like 15, 20 minutes with the two of them. And then they're satisfied and they love their homeschool experience. And then they're done. And then we move into snack time. So you can see here 9.45 is snack. It's very simple. It's always a simple snack, but I get them some food because I intend to read to them. So again, I'm using food as my read aloud time. This is when I tend to do history and science reading. And so we'll be having our snack and we'll be doing history or science. And it kind of depends on the day as to how much history and how much science we are doing. You can see here on Wednesday, I'm actually doubling up on our science because on Monday we are only doing history. And the reason for that is the twins, which I'll show you why Monday is different than Tuesday and Thursday in just a second. But we do snack and some history or science at that point. And then I move the twins into quiet time. So this, you guys, is the hack I have been talking about because I did not know what to do with my twins when I was teaching reading and things like that. There's only so much you can assume that they will free play nicely. And I risk it for that one hour for math, but they can't handle like two times of that. So what I decided to do was move their quiet time. You guys, this worked so well. At first I was a little anxious because now I'm running two quiet times and that seems silly and that never gives me any time off. Like there's not a time when all four kids are in quiet time. I've split them up now. And so I was kind of worried about that, but no. It's been amazing. I put the twins in quiet time from kind of that after snack time, which is about 10.15 to about 11.30. So an hour and 15 minutes, they select an activity, whatever it is there, go to separate rooms and we close the doors and we've been working on this for a long time. So this quiet time isn't new to them. They've been doing quiet time for a long time. This quiet time in the morning is new to them but it really works. And so it's able to kind of sequester the twins into something they are already familiar with, which is quiet time. And it allows me to do the next block in our homeschool, which I feel like is one of the most important blocks. And that's our language arts block. So you can see I have it written as like a 10, 15 morning language arts for C and P, which are my big kids here. So this is just big kids because the twins are in quiet time. So for morning language arts, they do their spelling, they do their abeka, which is mostly their phonics, and then they read aloud to me. So those three things are the things that we are focusing the most on. And between the two of them, that takes about an hour and 15 minutes. We are usually about done when the timers go off for my twins because I use those little 
green light up clocks for them to set their timer so they know that they can't get out until the timer goes off which I can link that below if that would be of help to anybody, but we love those little clocks. And so that gets us to lunch. And then I make lunch, get lunch ready, and then I do more reading over lunch. And at this point, this is when we do our read aloud. So like we're reading Charlotte's Web right now, but they're eating and I'm reading is basically how this goes. And then we do have some afternoon subjects this year. Mostly it is writing and some of the more fun things. And so you can see here that I have Sunlight Language Arts. And so I have day one and two, and in the Language Arts program, that is where they do copy work and they do their copy work application, which is just Sunlight's word for grammar. And so we do those in the same day. So I squish those together for an important reason because I really value the creative expression or the writing time frame in our schedule, which I'll show you that because that's not on Mondays that's on Tuesday and Thursdays. So then the afternoon on Mondays, we will do our little bit of copy work and application. And then this is typically where we do art or even our history projects because we have the hands-on history kit through sunlight. So this is where we get kind of the crafty artsy things at the end of the day. So the other unique thing we do is science experiments. So I'll have to show you that in just a second. So that's one full day of a mostly our normal schedule. So the unique part, if we move into kind of a weekly viewpoint of our schedule, is that we have Tuesday and Thursdays. Tuesday and Thursday afternoons, my twins go to in-person preschool. They love it, they love their teachers, they went last year, and it's a great time for me to get some time with my big kids to teach them more of the writing process. And so that is what I really have scheduled during those Tuesday, Thursday timeframes is writing. So that's where the creative expression for day three and day four for sunlight come in. And so I don't do writing any other time in any other part of the schedule other than when the twins are at preschool. And this is also a time I am holding loosely for if we need to do some art projects or even the hands-on history kit we can do on those Tuesday, Thursday afternoons when the twins are not home. And because the science experiments I currently have for Wednesday, you can see here that they sit kind of Wednesday morning um, when preschool is normally scheduled. And the only reason is, is because I have the most amazing in-laws who take the twins one day a week, and that is on Wednesdays. And so I do not have the twins on Wednesdays. So that's usually when we do our science experiments. But for instance, if we didn't get it done there, we do have Tuesday, Thursday afternoons when the twins are at preschool. So I really have developed a lot of the schedule based on my twins and what we can do with them present and what we can't and just to be smart about it because in the past I've just gotten frustrated with the fact that it just gets very chaotic in my house with them kind of on the loose but this really has helped kind of target those things that I want to get done when they are occupied or not home so that is pretty much our schedule the only unique part is you can see on Fridays that is when my kids have enrichment school. My two big kids here, C and P, have a enrichment school, and that is also when I do a little bit of preschool prior to that. So I don't do my normal schedule of like math prior to enrichment school. We don't do any other subjects on Friday other than them going to enrichment, and for them that's like, they get to do like sewing class, taekwondo, they get to do theater, or Legos, or robotics. It's just an amazing program. But this also gets me to squeak in one extra day of preschool with the twins. That gets them four days a week, which I think is just good for the repetition of some of the things we're trying to learn. That's really the entire schedule. I've taken you through step by step how I have set it up. I am so happy with how it has worked so far. We have used the schedule for about a month and I was so surprised by how well switching their quiet times worked and how well just kind of planning around the twins, but also giving them some love. It's not just about like getting them out of the way, but I feel like this schedule is very kind to them as well. So that is really what I have for this video. And like I said, if you are curious about exactly what curriculum we are using, I will link our playlist over here. And then over here, maybe I will put, oh, I will put the video I made maybe a year and a half ago about like toddler school. So this is like even younger than preschool and I have some wonderful resources. So if you have some of those ages as well, you can check out that video. But otherwise guys, that is what I have. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know down below if you have any questions about our schedule or just questions in general. And otherwise I will see you guys in the next homeschool video. All right guys, take care.